we're looking at where we're going to go in the morning. Basically, the birds have been just up and down the shore here on the sheet water side of the corn. So we've actually dug out the layout boats and we're going to do a little layout boat in the sheet water. So we're going to push the boats into the corn and be kind of tucked in there. So we're just going to set it up there and hopefully they come in the morning. We have a lot of water here in the Northwest, so layout blinds, not an option. The SUV blinds, not an option. But we did the next best thing. Uh, me and my buddy James pulled out all the tricks here, so you know we try not to pull them out throughout the year. You just gotta pull them out when you need them. High water, layout boats today, real quiet, little place. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. This is gonna be, I would say, if you wanna shoot a, a trophy pintail for the wall, this will be it because we're just going to take our time on pintails, but there's been everything else in here. It should be a good morning. That's a nice bird. Let me see the chest. Oh man, there's no, there's a little bit of black, but man, that's a booner. That's a. Coming back, coming back. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. It's not as long as we see him, but that's pretty damn nice. And he's in incredible, incredible shape. We're trying to get there. You know, I mean, you can see the green here. If the light hits it on the inside right here, that's just freaking. It's the coolest bird there is, hands down. Right there. All right, so we're in late January here, towards the end of our duck season in the Pacific Flyway. We've had a long, long season with lots and lots of different weather. We had very little water in the beginning of the season. December, we had record rainfall. All the rivers blew up, was able to flood up uh, some good spots that, we've, uh, that we were able to sneak in on, the spot we were in. Uh, today is one of those spots that's able to, you know, it floods up usually around November-ish. We were able to have uh, a good shoot today uh, on some sheet water.
Hey, so we're, we're at it again. We actually had different plans for this morning. The weatherman kept saying fog, 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 and we were gonna go run the river. And obviously the fog would be worse on the river, so we opted not to do that. And actually there was a ton of birds in the place we shot yesterday, so we just came back and moved some stuff around. The wind's kind of half cocked, so we don't know what we're gonna get. And there's still a little bit of fog here, and it's actually said that it might come in even thicker. So we'll see what we get here. We're gonna try this again. Uh, you know, we could take our time and shoot a incredible pintail here, a trophy bird. So we could do that. And there was some widgeon and some mallards, a bunch of other stuff in here, ton of teal. So we'll see what happens today. Two days will never be the same, but who knows? We might get, I don't know, might shoot a kangaroo in here. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. There's one on the left, looks like it's dumping in. Oh, coming, coming. Shoot him, James. The old boot lift beat down. Can't beat it. Can't beat him, join him. Pintail's coming, coming, coming from the right. <laughs> Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh man, that's a stud too. Great bird. James and I shot both our wall hanger pintails. Shot a couple spoonies. So, I don't know, we'll give it a little bit more here maybe or shut it down. We got a big day planned for tomorrow, so we've been resting a place for weeks. Plus the weather's just kind of doing nothing today, so we'll see. Maybe we'll sit this out or maybe we'll just call it good, I don't know, but I'm ready for tomorrow already. Okay, so we just got everything <laughs> unloaded today and loaded tonight for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're hunting with uh, a guy who's like truly family to me since I moved here to Oregon. He, he basically helped me change my career path and what I was doing and what I really wanted to do and more into the outdoor side and more into that. So, and, and got me really hardcore into the decoy side and painting and molding and all that. And we're gonna hunt with Don Guthrie and his wife, Terry, tomorrow. And like I said, Don's like salt of the earth. You get the shirt off his back and truly one of the nicest men I've met out here. And I look at him totally like a, a mentor through all this. So, uh, and he, which is crazy, but him and Ron Latch, I've been friends forever. And when Final Approach started out here in Oregon, Don was really close with Ron and did some stuff. So we're gonna catch up tomorrow, do all this stuff and just hunting with the guy. It's it's like the best time all year. I just get to spend it with real close friends and tomorrow should be just a great hunt, a fun time and just really close to my heart and final approach. So it'll be pretty awesome tomorrow. Look at that.
Yeah, Terry, look at that. Come on, heel hold, let's go. Load up, load up, load up. Thank you. We're in Oregon, uh, shooting a little sheet water that we've been holding for weeks. There's been a ton of widgeon, ton of pintails, ton of widgeon, pintails, a couple mount, well, some mallards, they're paired up and hiding. There's been some gadwall. James found a couple secret birds that I don't even want to hear or that are in here, so we might shoot something wild today, so we'll see what happens. So uh, no wind, it's dead, but this place has been rested and there's a lot of birds, so we're gonna, we're gonna put the hammer to them today and just have fun. And we got special guests with us. I'll go through all that in a little bit. And James is trying to work some mallards, so we're gonna get back to it. A couple more birds coming. Oh, good shot. <laughs> Couldn't pass that. That's a stud. Look at that. Don't poke your eye out. Don't poke your eye out, kids. That's the real deal right there. There. We're going to take a stroll back in history is what we do, which is the cool part of Final Approach. Don Guthrie and Ron were and still are friends. And they were just, I mean, that was the, I mean, that was the beginning of it. That was the heyday. That was the beginning of it. Like the waterfowl festivals, that, the waterfowl festival that you guys started yeah. in Oregon. And then, you know, all the callers started coming, everybody started coming. And then it just started to build more for the waterfowl industry here, definitely, and everywhere else. I mean, that was yeah. the, I mean, I don't want to say that was the good old days, but it was it was what started it all and what made it made it go. Um, so the the neck gaiter that Don has and I have on are older than my kids. Yeah, old school. Yeah, and total total old school. And yeah, you got it. And then you know uh, the backpack that Terry's got. I mean, that's going way back. I mean. That's the original stuff, and My and blind bag. yeah, the blind bag. Look at this. That's the original blind this bag. is this is this was the first logo, mm -hmm. before the geese. Yeah. Don started Columbia River decoys, and everybody had them. And we got some today, and we're gonna go look at them in a little bit. But I mean, we. I mean, those were, you know, you're 20 years ahead of your time on the decoys, you know. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun creating them. I wanted a magnum decoy to, to uh, basically hunt on the Columbia River, big, right. big, big water. And because of so much tide movement, you'd go from setting your decoys in four feet and in four hours you'd be in the mud. Right. And Or you'd be in the ice. Right. And so I inverted the keels so the birds would set down in the mud and stay upright and they wouldn't turn over on their side. And uh, I was creating a design that I didn't know at the time would just have tremendous movement with oh, very yeah. little wind. Incredible. There's no keel, so there's no drag, and so they sit on the water right. 
just the lightest little bit of wind moves them around. And guys uh, fell in love with them. I was shipping them all over the country. I shipped them to Canada. I shipped a bunch to a guy that you used to hunt with in Tri-Cities. Oh yeah, Mike Franklin. My Mike God, Franklin. He's got so many. And Ron Latchaw, at Final Approach, he wanted to get involved with them. So he, he first started by wanting to do Final Approach bags um, for my decoys. And well, those were the poncho ones, the right? Poncho. The, the so poncho could, that holds six and six. Yeah, you could put a poncho on yep. and carry a dozen birds out in the yep. water and set them. Yep. So he shipped the design that I had over overseas and right. came back with a final approach yep. poncho. Yeah, we sold a pile of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sold a poncho with every dozen decoys. Oh I think I, I, I built and sold. But. You know, you talk about that bag. That bag is... Yeah. I mean, how old's that bag? 25 years? Yeah. And this one's probably, this one's probably more. That's what I said, like, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build, you know, we're trying to build stuff mm -hmm. that lasts you that long and quality stuff and get it back to where the company was. Because listen, it was sold a couple times and changed. And, you know, that happens, that happens in business, yeah. you know? So we're fortunate enough now where we have people who love waterfowl hunting as much as you know, we do that own it and we can make stuff like that and, and design cool stuff like that and get back to quality and all that stuff. So we're, I mean, I'm pumped. You know, everything has gone, uh, you know, full circle for me to start there and then go to a couple different companies and come back. I mean, it's pretty cool. It was Oregon started. So, I mean, heck, that's pretty damn cool. Hey, you wanna go out, let's go out and look at a couple birds so we could look at them. So these were the first two, right? Yeah. I did tuck heads. Yep. I did tuck heads so I didn't have heads that I had to worry about carving separately. Yeah. And I wanted to be able to set them on the nose in the boat. Yep. And set them in decoy bags. Yep. And they rode in the water fabulous. And yep. They're oversized for the river. Yep. But those were my first two, and that's what I started doing. And then I, and then I went oh. ahead and molded. Uh, <laughs> that's molded the one everybody her. wants. I molded her and built the head strong enough that it wouldn't break and wouldn't have to worry about that. But they had an inverted keel in them. So they'd sit on the water when the tide went down and it hit the mud, it would, they would just set just like they're supposed to. Did some blue bill and did the widge in. Yep. You know, all the decoys today look, or we're trying to strive to look this good. And this was a long time ago. That's why I always say that these were 20 years or more ahead of its time. You know, now you look at all the feather detail and this is like some of the history and that's where some of this came from and that's why everybody had to pretty much step their game up. Yeah. So, it's a cool, cool part of it. Late season, Oregon, and shots were a little tough today and this whole week, kind of on and off, just no wind, no weather, no nothing, but man, we got some. Adam shot his, not his first pintail, he shot a couple while he's here, but some freaking booners. Yeah. Yeah. So he's always behind the camera, so we drug him out and said, man, you're shooting your, you're at least coming out here, you better shoot like a booner pintail for the wall. So this one is like a stud. And this one is probably, me and James think, the longest tail we, we've seen. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this one later and do, like a, and do like a turkey fan shot. So, I mean, cause that thing is the real deal. So that's uh, Last Pass episode here in Oregon. <laughs>